Hey guys, welcome to the Guardians of Atlas open alpha dev stream. I'm Bobby, I'm a game designer. And I'm Thibaut, I'm a graphics engineer. Cool, so we're going to start by having Thibaut play a game. I'm going to kind of explain what's going on. And then after that I'm going to commentate a replay that we played from a game a couple days ago against some playtesters. So, go ahead and switch right. to the game. Let's jump right in. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. So we have Rhyme and Vela. Um, I'm probably gonna play uh, some Vex. So this is the um, what we call sometimes internally a deck picker. We're call calling the army selection screen. Goes through a number of different names, but before each game, um, you and your two teammates choose different heroes. Um, you can all pick unique heroes. Each hero comes with one unit, and then you select a set of five additional units that you can build from. Um, each color or each hero has a different color: red, green, blue, or white. And you're locked to the units of that color and the set of neutral units that we call mercenaries. So Tebos picked Vex. Um, we'll see how Vex plays. He's got a lot of burst damage, got a lot of sustained damage. Um, is a little fragile. Yeah, I basically want to go late game Apocalypse and sustain my mid-game uh, army with some uh, beetles for a little bit of tanking and dervishes mostly for uh, map control to be pretty fast on the map basically. Let's go with that. Well, yeah, um, he's also picked a patch bot. It's just a really um, standard healer. Um, keeps his army nice and healthy early game. Um, after an upgrade late game they also can heal your army up pretty quickly. And um, he's also picked a juggernaut which is one of these utility units that we we have in the game, um, they actually aren't that expensive, but they take a long time to build, and they typically do something that your army can't do as well. Um, so in the case of the Juggernaut, it's really good at destroying buildings on its own, which kind of split it off. You can also use it to push with, so it can tank uh, defensive structures. Yeah, I'm gonna be trying to go tier two pretty early, so that I can start harassing with those Juggernaut like fairly early in the game. Um, Hopefully, I'll be using that to split push during Titans if we do get them. I should be starting pretty soon. Yeah, so this game, um, it's actually almost a mirror match hero wise, but there's still going to be a pretty um, diverse set of units, which will be cool. Um, that's one of the, the neat things that we're seeing play out is that. Um, even as this is presented, it seems like, oh, these heroes are like really grabbing the attention, but even when picking just a particular hero, there's a ton of different builds that you can play that are all pretty viable. Um, we don't see anyone with a green hero, which is going to be interesting. Typically, you run at least one green hero on your team because they're incredibly tanky, make a really good front line. So fights might be um, a bit faster um, with less just health pools overall. One. It is time to build our army. Alright, I'm gonna start top basically. I'm gonna go for this early camp. Hopefully my team will do this one. I'm ready. Yep, so you start the game. Um at the very beginning everyone takes these camps as Tebow's saying. Um Let's there are go. different resources, a couple different resources that we'll cover. Um clearing camps early is a good way to get your economy started. It gives you a little bit of energy and bio shards, those are our two resources. Energy is used to build all of your units, um, and low tier, high tier units, there isn't that much variation in energy yeah. cost. It's pretty much just supply. Um, bio shards are the tech resource. That's what you need to get upgrades, that's what you need to get the higher tier units, that's what you need to even get to the higher tiers. I like the way you Alright, so if you see a little, like, purple bar basically on the creeps, uh, it's a shield that they pull up at some point, and taking down the shield actually does extra damage um, to the creep, which lets you clear them out much faster. Um, although if you don't break the shield, uh, then they might trigger an AoE stun uh, that will, well, impede your damage for a bit. Alright, All right, uh, I'm gonna go check out the top creator region, I can get some farm from there. Gonna war here just to prevent anyone from coming from there. Let's move. Yep, so these are critters. They're um, 
pretty docile, not as aggressive as the Let's creeps, they like and they give fewer resources, but they spawn a little more continuously. Um, this is sort of the, how the Let's early go. phase of a lot of games Atlas go. There's a lot of poking back and forth. Both teams trying to just get that All starting right. set of resources. Sometimes you'll see a little more aggression. Looks like they have two people up here. So they're going to try to box Tebow out a little bit. I'm going to have to play a little safe here. Yeah. I'm going to try to poke the Sand Stingers a little bit because they're pretty low health. So if I can land. Let's move. <laughs> if I can land my D, uh, well, basically, let me poke at them a little bit. Right now, I'm getting shut down pretty hard. So I'm just going to wait for my extra units and uh, heal up a little right. bit. Then I'll go back and try to poke them more. Worst case, if I can't uh, get some farming right there, I will just end up doing this uh, yep. camp. There are a couple more camps on Tebow's side so that you can farm um, sort of safely. Let's you obviously uh, generally want to clear all the camps on your side and get some of the critters and do some aggression. Um, all right. But sometimes that's not possible. Yeah, I'm going to be building a few cinder beetles earlier than I would normally do Fine. just because I'm being shut down right now. You should probably worry. I should probably worry. That yep. is a very good point. There we go. Let's move. I'm gonna deward at the same time. So since Tebow's playing a, a pretty um, squishy right. composition right now, um, he's got to be very careful, especially with that flank path on the bottom. Um, Let's go. Uh, since they seem to have moved, I'm just gonna take theirs. Fine. Or not. <laughs> yeah. So those are sand stingers. They're also red units. Um, they're very low health, they have a dash that allows them to reset their auto attack, so they can do a lot of burst damage, they've got a lot of mobility. But Tebow's just trying to poke them down with his hero's basic ability, Scorch, um, and try to kite them at range a little bit. Going decently for him, um, they're both going to end up being a little low from this. Fine. The Titans have spawned. So the titans have spawned, I'm just gonna like finish this creep here and uh, go in my team middle, basically. Uh, my s few cinder biddles are gonna come out pretty right. soon, it's a little late, um, because I've been shut down pretty hard top. Hopefully I'm gonna get them yeah. soon enough. So at 4 minutes, uh, as we just saw, these titans spawn in the middle of the map. There's your titans. Um, they emerge forth from this center pit. And they're both kind of trapped in this region. The the art is still a work in progress, so to communicate that the best. But both teams are trying to DPS down the other team's Titan, and the first team to do so gets control of their Titan, and they can use it to push. So you sort of see this poke fest right now. It looks like Tebow's team is a little low on units. They're getting bullied off a bit. Um, the enemy Vela. Uh, has these these really long range raptors. They're even squishier than all the other units that we've seen so far, but they have incredibly long range. And Vela the hero throws this mark flare, and any units that the flare hits, the raptors can target from longer range. The sand stingers are kind of bullying Tebow's team off a little bit. Looks like they're about to kill the titan, which means theirs is going to heal up and start to push. But he was getting some nice trades in with his beetles up front to tank a lot of damage. Those beetles, um, they're much beefier than melee units. They have an ability that spawns two more beetles um, and pushes them out in front just to tank more damage. The beetles only last a little bit of time and they do decent damage, but they can target it down. This is looking pretty standard for a first Titan push so far. Um, Titans will respawn later in the game, but uh, each successive round, they're more and more powerful. This is a, a pretty good standard Titan push for them. They got two towers out of it, which is not bad. They can sometimes try to get a third tower, get a little bit of damage onto this warp. Um, the warp spire, which is one of the warp endpoints that Tebow's been using. Killing that really hurts your map control in that area um, and gives the opponents 
a lot of resources. All the structures drop resources on kill, and if you get closer to the archive, the main objective, you get progressively bigger rewards. Let's move. Yeah, so I'm gonna start building a juggernaut to actually try and split push a little bit. Since we lost that titan, I'm gonna try and basically Whenever the next Titan is going to spawn uh, in a bit, when the Titan spawn, I'm either going to push top or bottom, uh, wherever the enemy team is not, uh, just so it can get give us a little more leeway in the middle um, in that fight. So at seven minutes, um, earlier in the game, at the beginning of the game, we were clearing these easy camps. You can see on the minimap, these little green monster icons. At seven minutes, medium camp spawn. Uh, they're more powerful, they give more resources. And Tebow's team right now is trying to take control of this region so they can get uh, this like medium camp that you can see on the right. Let's move. All right. Yeah, so Tebow doesn't have a word right now. It's on cooldown. Um, so we just split off one of his tier 1 units, a Spitfire, just to uh, sit there and kind of act as a living ward. Um, the way that resourcing works for these camps and for the critters uh, is that the team that gets the last hit, that's the team who can collect the shards and the energy. Um, they'll drop with enemy team colors if the enemy last hits them. So that's why they want to have good vision there, not just because they're sort of in a dangerous spot, but also because they want to make sure no one can steal uh, the last hit from them. What? So right there, they managed to kill that creep. Looks like they got both of them actually, so the opponent can't pick those up. All right. That was a pretty good trade for them. They poked forward and, and took one of the enemy camps, um, but they're not going to get the resources right away. They just have to back off and try not to take too many losses. Yep, I'm going to transition slowly into dervishes just to get a little more uh, move speed there. It's going to help me kite them and not get uh, cut out as much like this. Yep. Looks like your juggernaut's finished. Yep, so I'm going to spawn that. Uh, let me just... Because <laughs> I actually sure forgot right. to do that. Yeah. So these are settings that allow Tebow to more easily split off units. Um, we have an all army hotkey that's on tilde by default, but with a with a setting you can um, use alt want? and a number to split off units so he used all one i think uh yeah basically alt one and now the juggernaut won't follow his main army it's in a separate control group now um, so he's going to use it to start pushing so the juggernaut can only attack buildings um it has a heart of gold it doesn't want to hurt units it's just there to destroy structures create a split push threat for Tebow now, although you can also push with it, it just sort of depends on the situation. Yeah. But it looks like they're responding pretty quickly to it. It is going to take some time for them to kill. This is time they're not spending doing something else. I'm going to see if I can pull it back, but they got some slows from Ryan, which is going to be a little hard. They were pretty fast to react, much faster than I expected. Fine. Yep. Um, the good thing about them is that they're actually all they're taking is time. So I can fairly easily rebuild it, and uh, hopefully we'll get it on time back for um, the Titan push. Yep. For units like the Juggernaut, um, and there, there are a few others like the Engineer um, and the Sentinel, their cost is really time, production time, um, and also the slot that they take in your army. But in terms of actual resourcing, that didn't cost Tebow that much. It just basically cost me timing, which is, I should have hold it a little bit more um, for the titans, because right now it's building, so I can't use it right away for the titans. Right. It would create a really good split threat that um, they would basically have to split someone off the titan to deal with. Let's go. Let's move. Okay, so they have some purifiers set up. That's actually pretty scary for us since we don't have a uh, heavy front line. A little fire never right. um, so purifiers are at these guys here that you see shooting from the fog of war. Uh, whoops. Yep, they siege up. They have splash damage and long range. They're really scary. Um, this is why I said earlier. In a lot of games right now, you'll see um, green units or at least some of the tankier blue units that can really soak up those purifier shots. 
but it looks like uh, Eris and the Sand Singers are kind of extending a little further forward past the Purifier line, so they're able to get some good poke damage in. Um, as the Titans are getting lower, they're going to kind of circle around this pit, which means the Purifiers won't be as much of a factor, right? They can't actually hit their Titan, or uh, they can't actually damage Tebow's team's Titan right now very easily. So the Purifiers are going to have to lurk forward a little bit. I'm basically going to build a little more uh, Dervishes and Cinder Beetle just so that I can tank their first hits and hopefully get in range, get some damage on them. Yep. Looks like Rhyme is going in. He's using uh, Intervention. It's a spell that reduces all the incoming damage in that circle for 40%, uh, down to 40%. Um, so he's able to pick off a Purifier really nice without losing too much. Um, they can kind of whittle away like that. But looks like Tebow's team is actually getting pretty low too. Yep. Um, they're just trying to hold on to this Titan. Uh, Aeris and Sandstingers are trying to dash in, land the finishing blow, but they're going to take a lot yeah. of damage. I'm that. basically waiting for my ult. I'm almost level 10. Uh, if I can get a good ult, this could actually turn this yeah. around. Yep. The Purifiers have crept up, and they did barely yeah. get the Titan. And their Titan now is healed up, and it's pushing forward. So now I'm basically just going to try and bait them to group up so I can... Um, use my ult to wipe more, most of their tier 1s if possible. Right, so his ultimate is an ability called Pyroblast. It shoots a gigantic fireball in a line in front of Vex and does a lot of damage. So if he can get a good line, he can probably wipe a decent chunk of their army. He's one of the stronger ultimates in the game. Got his ultimate now. They're not as much grouped up. I'm going to be able yep. to wipe this hit, so I'm just going to hold just on it. Little. Yep. He waits for these sand singers to dash in. Yeah, I'm just afraid they have too much speed right now to actually, yeah, uh, land the hit on them. It looks like he doesn't have double dash yet. I think you could check it some does not. Like. Yeah, I might wait for his next dash and use it. But that will like now. Now, so I'm just gonna dodge oh, that ult. That's Eris's volley ult. So that was a good ult by him to zone out as their Titan finished the warp spire. Um, because if Tebow's team had used some of their ultimates, they might have been able to push it off, but the volley basically meant that was theirs. That was a pretty okay Titan push again, um, about what you'd expect. Let's go. But now Tebow's team needs to regroup, and it looks like someone on their team has a Juggernaut top, which is doing damage. Yeah, I just sent nice. it earlier while the fight was happening, because uh, they were pushing pretty hard bottom here. There was I was pretty sure I could get yep. hopefully enough time to get that tower down. Yep. If let totally untouched by both teams, a Juggernaut can kill a basic tower and then do a little damage on another one or heal up. Um, but if you send some units with it, it can be more efficient. If they send some units to defend it, they can defend without taking any damage. Um, just like earlier in the game at 7 minutes, how the medium camp spawned, uh, now these hard camps have spawned, both in the corners and kind of in these safe plateaus. Looks like Tebow's team is going to kind of posture to take this top camp. Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna guess they are doing the bottom camp right now. All right. Yeah, vision is super important. Um, if Tibo's ally like sent a unit down there and they could confirm that they're doing the bottom camp, this would be a lot safer. Because um, the hard camps are... They, they do put out a decent amount of damage and they put you into this kind of corner. It's very difficult to retreat from. But Tibo's gonna use his Juggernaut to push and get a little bit of vision just to see if they're gonna come in. But I think Tebow's right, I think they're doing the bottom hard camp right now. Um, it looks like someone is coming in, Eris I yeah. think. Let's back here. Um, the, the hard camp was great because now I have enough uh, shards to actually get my IN units and um, hopefully they're better during team fights, especially because they have quite a bit of tier 1s right now, so if I can then those uh, destructive prophecy thoughts, it will be yep. pretty good for us. And so you've been seeing um, Ebo hop into this production mode every once in a while, um, typically between fights. Production is pretty simple, right. um, there are two pieces to it. One is the production queue, Fine. so everything in the game goes through the same production queue and you have a number of slots. You can see that sort of on the bottom right of the HUD. Um, units, any of the units, high tier units, low tier units, and upgrades, I'll go through that. Um, things have build times, upgrades take a lot longer, higher tier units take, take longer than lower tier units. Um, the other component is the core, the command core, which you can see at the very bottom of the, the bottom right. 
near the minimap? Yes. So right now I need, uh, if you saw earlier, I can't quite, even though I have enough shards, I can't quite build my uh, Apocalypse or all of them just because I'm low on supply. So I basically used my command core to uh, unlock a lot more slots so I can build all my three um, Apocalypse. Yep, the command core, the main three functions are that you can get a little bit of energy, you can get some shards, or you can increase your supply. Um, and it does this all passively in 30 second intervals. There's also a fourth that lets you unlock additional production slots, but Tibo's already at the Let's max, go. he's got all six slots. All right. uh, I'm also usually when I get Apocalypse like this, I'm pretty early getting this upgrade right here. Uh, which is, I find pretty good, lets you land uh, really quite a few shots if you can actually land them. It basically uh, reduces your cooldown. Uh, Bobby, do you know exactly uh, by how much? It's two seconds per unit hit. Though, so, yeah, the Apocalypse calls Destructive Prophecy. It's a huge nuke um, a in a particular plan. area, a target area. So it'll cast, it takes a little bit of time to handle and land. Well, when it does, it does right. a ton of damage to anything it hits. Um, and with the upgrade, every unit he hits takes two seconds off the cooldown. So if he hits a couple big ones on, Let's say, like go. the Sand Singers after they dash in, he can immediately follow up with another Destructive Prophecy. Yep. Looks like they actually got to the uh, Titan region a little bit before. This is really good for them Let's because go. these Purifiers are just now setting up. The Purifiers got a range upgrade now. You can see that they... Oh, actually, they have a Wind Ray, too. Um, but Tilo's gonna poke in with a Destructive Prophecy, almost kills that first Purifier. The really good Purifier lane is down the right. Tilo's gonna use his Power Blast to try and clear. It's a ton of Sand Singers for that, it's pretty good. But the Sand Singers did manage to poke forward and kill uh, his Apocalypse. He's got another one building. Yeah, I got pushed hard pretty hard there. Yeah, that was pretty tough. Fine. Um, like yeah, I the, said, the earlier, lack of front line yeah. here definitely doesn't help. Um, yeah, it makes it much trickier. Um, Tebow and his team—they they have a bunch of different ways to poke Let's go. at the purifiers. Um, and if they can sort of linger at the range of the purifiers for long enough, Fine. they can poke them down and then engage as they've taken the purifier count down. Because once the purifier count gets a little lower, it really just starts to fall, um, becomes very, very fragile, um, and doesn't have enough upfront damage to stop you from getting in range. Once you get in range, the purifiers are paper thin. Okay, so I have another up glides coming up um, in a little bit. Just warping in right now. Let's go. Hopefully we can regroup in time. We're definitely on the losing end here, but hopefully uh, landing some good abilities will let us do something there. I'm gonna try to not get frozen. I'm yeah, really afraid really of that afraid frog of that right there. Yeah. Lice Frog has a, a channeled ability called Icy Breath that freezes everything in a cone right there. Run gets almost gets out of it, but it gets trapped. Oh, that was an amazing Destructive Prophecy. The upgrade still not quite finished yet though, so yeah. it doesn't get the cooldown yet. Sadly, it would have yeah. been really nice uh, if yeah. that was finished. That would have been an instant reset, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. But these purifiers are unseaged right now. Um, yeah, so he might be able to poke a little yeah, bit. Yeah, my team's coming a little bit. I'm gonna in. try. Yep. Try and do something here. They're actually backing a little bit. Backing off, yeah. They really want to finish the Titan down. He was threatening. Destructive Prophecy. Oh! Wow. Oh, really nice shields. Yep. Still um, hit a bunch of units, so he's still got a lot of his cooldown off, but um, the enemy uh, Vela used a precog shield, which prevented all the damage on a couple of the units. But they're still able to bully off. They've been zoning really well, um, so they're making a bit of a comeback here. Um, this Titan, if they can get, will really swing it back for them. They've only been able to kill one 
power so far. They're on a the bit of a back foot, but they are bullying pretty well right now. Another pretty solid disruptive prophecy. Got a little bit of the cooldown back. Sand Stingers are coming in on the right now. Icy Breath completely misses. Tebow's just trying to stall for another Destructive Prophecy. Let's move. Yeah, I'm gonna really try to keep my army alive right now. Yep. All right. oh, and they're really trying to finish this Titan. They do get it, but if Tebow can answer, then they can defend the push and, and counter push pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm still on cooldown on my ult, so I couldn't use it there. That would have been a nice help. Let's move. All right, we're gonna have to defend that. Uh, hopefully, we'll full quick yeah, enough so. that we don't lose this. But this is gonna be hard. Uh, these tight, these titans at this point in the game deals quite a lot of damage. Yep, they get pretty scary. Um, this is about when they start to to feel really, really like they can push toward the archive. Um, if 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 Tebow's army and his team had gotten wiped there, and the enemies are able to push with this titan, it would probably end the game or come close. But because they actually were able to trade and whittle down uh, the enemy team, they're gonna just lose. It looks like a healing generator here. Yeah, pretty much. But we won't lose that turret here, which is pretty good. Yeah, the archive towers do a fair amount of damage and offer a lot of protection. Um, it looks like it'll take some shield damage, but it can heal that back up. Yeah, so I'm running a little low on energy. Uh, if you've noticed, we haven't been redoing uh, camps uh, because we're pressured. Uh, that much, so we're gonna try and do that and hopefully get back there. Energy is basically the primary resource for um, building units. Yep. Let's do this. Yeah, and almost everything you do in the game gives you shards, except for these camps. Um, the critters give you shards only, killing enemy structures, killing enemy heroes gives you shards, but the camps give you a little bit of shards and a little bit of energy as well. Um, and so Tebow's been a little low on energy. He's trying to get some energy back up. Um, he's got more than enough to remax right now. So he's in good shape. So he's starting to, now that he has enough energy, he's starting to increase his supply again. So we can get just a larger army on the field at once. Yeah, gonna try and grab this guy too. Yep. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah, build up a resource pool. This gives you gives him the ability to remax a little safer. Um, in those trades, he can get an army back out quicker. Um, and then also lets Let's him go. invest in upgrades, buy some higher tier units as he gets more supply in. Um, it looks like his allied Veil player is zoning the ramp pretty well um, with a Zephyr. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure they don't like come on us while we're doing the... All right. The, uh, that was... That was bad. Yeah, didn't see the purifier sieging there, so I lost my Let's go. one of my apocalytes. Yep, but Rhyme is able to catch some purifiers out. They have a good line, but he's making a pretty big dent. Yeah, the little uh, nodules here are kind of a pain for me. Oh, I got cut out. Hopefully, they won't be able to get my apocalytes. Yeah. Yep. So I got one apocalyte. The dream is alive. That was a little overkill for just that guy, but I really don't like conduits. <laughs> They're pretty strong. Uh, Rhyme used his ult there, so that would have frozen anything in that radius, but um, didn't manage to catch anything out. Let's see if they like it. Hugo has two Apocalypse making right now, so if his team can hold on for a bit, uh, that's going to be a lot of burst damage. He's got a Juggernaut that he Let's can... Go use to try and create some pressure to pick off a structure. So he's splitting that off. Um, his team is regrouping, but yeah, they really, they have to be very careful about how they engage this because they don't have a lot of tanky units. Um, yep. Rhyme, like their heroes are actually probably their tankiest things right now. Yeah, those purifiers are actually very scary for us right now. Um, yep. And Vela's using dead eyes to try and snipe them. That's a little the line sniper ability you're seeing go down, but uh, the opponent's using shields to prevent the damage from it if he reacts fast enough. He keeps trying to poke in with right. dead eye snipes Unit production complete. and picks them off. So they, they lower the purifier count a fair Let's bit. Um, they might be able to try to make a counter push. Um, 
All right. I don't think the other two hard camps are up yet. They likely took them earlier, so... I should actually check that. Are we splitting off a single Spitfire to do that? Um, looks like his Juggernaut did cause them to respond. Um, they're going to take care of it pretty easily. He was just looking to get some big Destructive Prophecy hits to try and create an opening. The nice snipes go down. The Ice Frog is in the front line. And it does get a decent freeze off, but no follow up. He has three Destructive Prophecies. Sensors are dashing in. He's trying to zone with them. He gets a pretty good hit on it. He's got another one up already. Um, so the Sand Singers have an upgrade that gives them a second charge of dash. Um, it looks like, I think he has that upgrade now, at this point he should. Um, but he actually had both his dashes on cooldown there, I think. So Tebow's just trying to keep track of the dash cooldowns and the dash charge count so that he can catch the Sand Singers in the top So those are <laughs> those are conduit beams. It's a, a white unit, white tier uh, tier three unit that channels a drill laser in a direction. Yeah, they're really trying to get those. Yeah, it does a lights. lot of damage. Um, it can do a lot of ship damage, as we're seeing here. It's also really good at melting tanks, um, but that's not going to be too useful for them in this game. I should rebuild my Juggernaut as soon as I can here. I've been pretty off on my timings on that. Um, usually I try to keep them on for the Titan fights. The Titan fights. Um, but we've been under so much pressure that I've basically yeah. been trying to use them to just relieve anything I can, really. Yeah, streaming and, and uh, casting and playing is it's it's tough. Hard. <laughs> yeah, and our game is actually uh, it's surprisingly tough to keep track of everything, given how much there is to do with your army. Alright, that was that was pretty big. He got that cooldown back instantly. Uh, these are two Pyrosaurs, though. I'm, yeah, I'm very They're afraid of that, too. They could to melt. Yeah, but they don't actually get a good hit off, and now they're going to have to try and retreat with their tails between their legs. One goes down. The other's still up front. If someone can lock it down, that would be huge. Yeah, it's going to get away. So it's going to have... Uh, Fire death back up, flamethrower. Right. Yeah, they just have, with purifiers and conduits, they have really good control of this region. Yeah, um, we just can't contest this. Uh, this is going to be hard because this time they'll be able to push with their um, rank 4 titan. Yeah, and, and sort of this game is playing out exactly to their plan. Um, they've got a lot of zone control. And so far, Tebow's team is, has played into that. Um, they've kept trying to fight in a particular area around the Titans, and that's sort of a very intuitive thing to do, but um, in a lot of cases, if you run with more mobility, you can end up creating split pressure with your army itself um, and sort of force the purifiers out of position. Um, but it's actually kind of tough for Tebow's composition to do that. He gets some nice, oh, very shields, good shields. Yeah. Yeah. That's still really pretty solid. He's keeping, too, yeah. keeping his Apocalypse alive, just trying to make the last stand. Fine. And the Raptors are trying to mark his Apocalypse and do uh, snipe one down. One, yeah. He's got a, a last ditch Pyro Blast, which should do a lot of damage. But um, it's also like, I need to get fairly close, otherwise they get just too much time to dodge it. Yep. The other team really wants to end here. Looks like they're, they're trying to, but they're being cautious. Loses a couple of units to some dead eye snipes. This Titan is doing a lot of work. Um, if they push now, they might be able to end, but Chiba gets a nice start prophecy on a couple of spellcasters. Trying to get a power blast. Gets the tank not enough low, damage not to quite enough. down the tanks, sadly. Yep. That might be it. I was I was wondering why they weren't pushing right away, but now they're basically gonna... Uh, uh, maybe... Actually, the hero hold... Yeah, they're trying <laughs> to focus it down, but not quite. They they uh, they should have pushed a yeah. little more with their titans yeah. there. They, they gave us a lot of time to yeah. respond to it. Yeah, if they had... Uh, 
committed a little harder, they probably could end it given how close it was. Um, they sunk a lot of damage into killing units at that point. Um, you know, that if it had gone on to the the archive, so now we're it. very low. We're all very low on resource, so we really need to get some camps going. Otherwise, um, they'll be able to push us down with yeah. just their army. Right. Yeah, but this is um, a good chance for them to regroup. If everyone in Tebow's team can kind of regroup, um, rebuild, and get back to a maxed army, which Tebow's almost at um, the supply max, so you can only have a a, a cap of eighty. He's at seventy four max. He's building back up to that, so if he can get back up to 74 with a, a high tier army, he's got two Apocalypse right. building. Um, so Let's go. Yeah, this time I'm just gonna hang on my Titan a little bit. If I send it right now, we move. don't have no idea where they are, so they might just be able to pick it up very easily. I'm gonna try and keep it so that I can either uh, reef pressure, pressure if they push right away with their army, or yep. use it uh, if we can reach the next Titan phase. Yep. So it looks like uh, the other team is doing the hard camps. They've come back off of, uh, they've, they've respawned and come back off of cooldown. Um, so we're taking control of that region. It's really in your team's best interest to, to try and just sacrifice it probably. Poke down like they're doing, but not take too many losses themselves. Conotes are, are putting a lot of pressure over yeah, the wall. Yeah, they definitely have a very high tier army right now. Yep. Yeah. Um, and like we said, the, you know, the Titans get incredibly uh, powerful over the course of the game, and so even though Tebow's team hasn't been able to put together a really strong push yet, if they can just get one of the later Titans, like this one, uh, they can make a really strong play. All of the front buildings will just fall like paper, um, and they can actually make a play on the Archive. Um, if they lose the next Titan, It'll definitely end the game yep. because they've taken so much damage already. Um, so in this case, they really have to do whatever they can to try and stop it, whether it be poke down like they've been trying, or try to create some split pressure to try and get, catch someone out of position, get them to rotate off the Titan. I was trying to ward there because um, I was I'm I was I kind of want to get the um, I was. Yeah, I kind of wanted to get the hard camp up there to get more resources, but I was very afraid of them just like waltzing in Walking and, in and getting all yeah. They the could very buildings. much end. Yeah. Uh, it would be pretty easy for an army, especially with the Nexus. Shields are back up, but it's still half or a third. Yeah, health. I'm gonna have to send it. Yep. And at this point of the game, armies can really wreck through uh, the buildings and the archive as well if they go unchecked. Um, in this case, they're just making a threat without the Titan. Um, they're afraid of losing a Titan fight, and they just kind of want to fight here. Um, they're keeping on the pressure. The Titans have spawns, so we'll see if they'll back off. So yeah, hopefully I'll have that Juggernaut applying a little bit of pressure. I don't think they have to be too worried about it, because they have still so many structures up. Uh, Ice Frog goes down, that's big. I was going to try to get Destructive Prophecy in. Oh, <laughs> that was nice. Nice, not bad. Um, so that... That area of effect you saw um, is, a, is a spell that the Zephyr, one of the white spellcasters, can cast that speeds up all friendly units and slows down all the enemy units in that region. So it prevented him from fully dodging the Destructive Prophecy, letting Tebow get a couple of nice hits in. It's pretty decent. His Juggernaut is doing its job right now. It's distracting one of the opponents, causing them to respawn. Um, they're getting some free damage in, which is good. And this white <laughs> army is totally trapped right now. And <laughs> gates completely wiped with destructive prophecies. Tebow loses uh, a couple apocalypse for it, or one apocalypse, but that's still a pretty, pretty solid trade. Can keep the rest alive. Yeah, if I can get the red army too, it would put us in a yep. pretty good spot. Some but... nice snipes are going down. He gets the destructive prophecy. He gets a decent chunk of the sand singers. They're just trying to kite back and get more chip damage in so they can go in and finish the titan. Yeah, I can't really afford to go too much in uh, because those Apocalypse are just really, really fragile right now. Yep. Yeah, that's gonna be tough for us. Uh, they can get quite a lot of damage on the titan there. Yeah, yep. uh, not that much actually. If we can regroup yeah. here um, and get some, some poke damage, that might actually yep. help Means us. Clearing the white army and a lot of the sand singers removed a lot of their sustained DPS. Um, their blue player Rhyme has a lot of control lizards that slow in damage units, but nothing that's gonna 
really burst down the Titan. Um, um, on the contrast, Tebow's team has a lot of sustained damage. They can they can deal with this pretty well right now. The enemy Vela trying to mark the Apocalypse over the wall and get some nice snipes off. Um, clear the vision, like realize after Tebow dodged that we definitely had vision of that. Um, trying to get some nice shots on. Gets a couple hits onto an Apocalypse and one of his dervishes, but they're alive still. Um, Eris is pushing forward with the Sand Singers. And a nice freeze. Oh, we can't quite follow up in time. Gets a Pyro Blast to kind of zone, get a lot of units. Pretty good. Nice. I need to pull back a little bit. I should have been more reactive to that uh, freeze. I didn't see it yeah. uh, when it landed. Yeah, this is the sort of thing that, uh, you know, if you're. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on Discord, you can communicate around a little better. Uh, that was Vela's ult. Vela, um, Vela's ult, uh, diplomatic measures, stealths her and all of her units, and gives them a speed buff temporarily. Yeah, so I got caught completely off guard there. Uh, yep. They got my two remaining Apocalytes. Yep. There, there is detection in the game. Um, you can get Sentinels that are just invisible flying detectors. Um, there's also an upgrade for your wards that gives them detection. Yeah, she didn't do too right. much play with it earlier, yeah. so I so you didn't wasn't really it. worried about it. Yep. Um, it's not game ending either. Like, it's yep. not what let them push here, but yep. it was definitely a good play there. Yep. Right now, I'm basically just like holding while my apocalypse are rebuilding because this is basically my main tool if I want to deal with them right now. Um, they have, Tebow's team has managed to build up a pretty big army again, um, so they can threaten a little bit. These later titans have a lot of health, which is sort of what buys you time to make some of those split push threats. Like I said, armies can also wreck through buildings pretty quickly. Um, but both teams sort of opting just to stay mostly in the titan region right now, aside from the juggernaut push. Yeah, Salu can't quite commit to it. Uh, it's just a lot of threatening damage. Yep. Um, have to really play this. Yeah, these two Apoglides, I can't. I can't lose them right now. Yep. If I lose them, they can just do whatever they want. Dash in. Yeah, they're not baiting much on the trees. Yeah, it's easy to bait with the double dash. Um, dash in, get some damage. Dash out. A Pyrosaur comes in, gets a fair amount of damage, but Rhyme gets a nice freeze onto it, locks it in place, it's gonna go down. A little fire never hurt anybody. I'm basi I basically want to get those Raptors right now, because they're probably their main sustained DPS if they can just stay in place and not get contested. Yep. Five. Also, we saw sort of an interesting compositional switch um, by the other team. They went for a mid game that was really heavy with purifiers. Um, it sort of caught people's team off guard. They didn't really have the tools at that point to poke it down. Um, but later on in the game, right. Tiba's ally bought a lot of dead eyes that can snipe. And the enemy Velo player has precogs that can shield, but at some point there just aren't enough shields to deal with the really low cooldown uh, snipes that are going off. And so they went for a hard switch to convoy switch. Um, can deal a lot more sustained damage to the Titans, can poke a little more safely than the Purifiers that have to sit in a spot um, for a long period of time to really be effective. Yeah, they're All just right. going to finish this one. I don't think we can contest that. Yeah, it's really low. Yep. Yep. There it is. Let's go. Okay, so right now, basically, uh, what we want to try doing is just um, trying to wipe their army if possible using uh, high tier units and just hope we have enough damage to get the titan down but the nexus is actually the archive is actually really low right now yeah that's gonna be very hard at this time of the game the titans just do a lot of damage um, yeah. At this time, I'm just gonna <laughs> try and <laughs> zone them up a little off, bit, but, but it's gonna be don't have yeah, really damage. hard. I just yeah. don't think they have the damage. Yeah, yep. the game basically ended as they, they lost the time fight. Let's see if they like it. 
Yep, GG. Oh. So, uh, now I'm gonna hop on and ask a game that uh, the game design team um, played against some playtesters earlier in the week. Um, let's switch over to that. Switch that. Oh, wow, uh, I'll let you. Yep. Sure. Full okay. camera right there. All right. So let me load up this replay real quick. Oh, I can't see the um. Yeah. Uh, I can find it from here. Any questions from the Twitch chat while we load up, up a game? Yeah. Uh, I was doing a horrible job of looking at that, so I just totally ignored <laughs> you guys. Um, hopefully some helpful mods answered yeah, questions. Yeah, I see some people answering. Okay. We should be good there. Choose your hero. Yeah, so that was a tough game from the picks alone. Um, like I sort of reiterated, if you're going to play that style where you uh, want to fight a lot in the center, you're going to want sort of tanky frontline. Um, otherwise, you want some good mobility to make threats, like split push threats in the Titan fights, which means you'll certainly lose the early Titans if you're not fighting there. But the later Titans have so much health that you can afford... Actually, you can push to win if they don't respond at all. Like, if they just sit there DPSing down that last Titan um, with a high damage army with mobility, you can push in to win um, in the time it takes them to kill the Titan. Um, so it necessitates a response on their part, which means that, you know, those purifiers that are setting up have to be a little more careful. They have to reposition. They might get caught out. Um, and purifiers really need to be in a set position with someone protecting them. Um, but in those straight up titan fights with uh, yeah, all the purifiers really and conduits, it's really tough. Not having a front line versus that much um, that much damage AOE and burst damage yep. is actually really really hard. Yep. Uh, normally we would. I I went with the safe pick here because I was streaming. Like I'm yeah. pretty comfortable with red usually. Yeah. Um, definitely there. What I what we should have done is pick either uh, hydros or uh, grass just to get some some good tanky front line. Yep. Yep. Um, even rhyme. Uh, like we said, like the, the the heroes have the four different colors. So blue and green. Any of the either of the blue or green heroes um, can get access to really really beefy frontline guys that we'll see um, in this game a little bit more. Almost loaded up. So um, let me right. pause this real quick. Let's uh, let me set my my settings. Right. Getting my settings. Yeah, because we we all kind of have. Yeah. Uh, very different control setups. Yeah, I'm a uh, hundred percent left minimap till I die. Let's see tooltips, yeah. Yeah, so basically, right now you can rebind like most of the keys, including control groups. Um, you have also a couple of settings to let you um, basically take some units out of your uh, main army control group, so it yep. lets you split push a little uh, more easily. Yeah. Um, also, some people like to have their uh, scrolling speed and bring methods a yeah. little different. I do max scroll speed when I'm watching replays. Uh, a little intense. Um, I'll try to keep <laughs> everything keep a little it smooth. Very smooth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not yeah. too hard to watch right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, yeah, so whenever you're ready, um, you want to switch the. Yeah, uh, we don't have hotkeys for this. Uh, we oh, don't. Shit. Didn't have time. Okay, so, that so this guy. Yep, uh, and if you focus back, you should. Good cool. to go. Yep. Um, cool. So before I start the game, um, it's good to pick a side. This is a, a dev versus play tester game. Um, on the blue team, we've got a couple of the members of the dev team: um, myself, Requiem, and Trask. And on the red team, we have some of our really um, awesome, super dedicated play testers: Milia, Slammer, and Sushi Dad. Um, I'm probably gonna refer to myself in the third person now that I'm thinking about it because uh, most of you tuning in probably won't keep catching up with the fact of, of which player I am yeah. that I'm Excal. Let's keep calling out the, the um, names there. 
Yeah, but it's it's not a weird thing. Like, let's not make it a weird thing. <laughs> totally normal. Uh, cool. So, for those of you just joining us, um, 3v3, um, each team's trying to destroy the other team's archive. Um, we're going to go ahead and start. Um, both teams are in the little warm-up period right now, and they're going to start spawning in. Um, so one thing to kind of take note of really quickly, uh, I think something that's cool is that both teams have a Celesta, as you can see in the bottom here, a Celesta and a Hydros, but we're going to see how differently these Hydroses play. They've picked different units, so they're going to go very different builds. Um, like we covered on earlier, um, the command core at the bottom here, um, Milia is going for a very high shard build, which means he's going to be rushing high tier units. He's going to have a pretty squishy army at the beginning of the game. Um, on the other side of the map, we're going to have Trask, who's actually, as you can see, going for a lot of supply early and then energy. He's looking to force a lot of trades, have an early game army and bully. So right now, everyone's just clearing their easy camps as they build up an army. Um, Trask is starting with one of the riskier ones, and Malay is actually coming in to harass a little bit. Uh, this is an advantage because he's trying to delay our shard income. He's getting a lot of shards himself already. Um, so as much as he can delay our tech, that sort of stretches the advantage he's trying to get. Um, so I kind of... Treyas calls for help and... not me. Excal comes in and flanks and tries to help Treyas. Um, I was clearing a camp but I, I pulled off just to help him. Um, Excal is going to put a ward down and then... Once he's sure that Trask is fine, he's going to help a little bit and go to start farming on, on his own. Milia has kind of pulled back now, um, and they're both sort of just clearing at the same speed. It looks like uh, some of Slammer's Wisps, these are really high damage, very squishy units, are going to try to come in and seek the last hit on these. Whichever team gets the last hit, that's the team that gets the resources that are dropped. He's trying to poke there. Trask is doing a good job of body blocking and pulling it back into his towers. Um, this one's getting low, Slammer gets vision of it, it looks like he's going to try to poke up and try it, nope, doesn't quite get the last hit, Trask secures it with Hydras with a nice little swipe, and actually Slammer loses quite a few units, um, Trask is going to try to chase and finish him off, but Millie is quick to respond. Yeah, it's caught in a pretty bad spot there. Yep, so he's going to lose most of its stuff, so it looks like, uh, meanwhile on the top, we have uh, Requiem just kind of farming this credit region, getting a lot, a lot of uh, nice guaranteed early game income. He's not getting harassed very much at all here, though so he's gotten all of these shards from this area and he cleared a camp earlier. So he's going to have a pretty big um, Wist army and be able to still tech as well fairly quickly. Um, down at the bottom, since Trask has lost all of his stuff, uh, Excal is just trying to poke and prod, sort of boxed out. Um, just trying to deny the region a little bit. Um, Slammer sort of overextending with his wisp a little bit, losing some wisps. They're trying to get all the critters at once right now. It's a little greedy. Um, he's, his wisp count is lowering. Tresk is going in to try and engage. Yeah, they definitely were a bit greedy here, trying to get the three um, critters on the bottom side. Yep, and now they're just trying to pull back. They got a fair number of critters, got a, a decent chunk of income, but Delia goes down to that, drops a lot of shards. Slammer might also get caught here. So that was a pretty good trade for blue team. They've taken sort of control of this. Uh, now it's up to them to maximize this advantage. They've got more on the field here. They can clear these. They might be able to poke at a tower. Um, the first Titan will spawn at four minutes pretty soon. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Requiem is just farming up a storm here. This shit hasn't really been able to bully him off much yet. He does now have some of these Howling Commandos. They have a splash attack that's really good against these small low health wisps. Yeah, it's definitely going to be tougher for him now to stay uh, uncontested in that critter region top. Yeah, so now uh, Milia is using some Scuttle Guards to, to try and catch Requiem in the top region, try and gank in, but Requiem is quick to retreat. Now he's just trying to steal this camp. Um, Trask is well aware of this and coming over to try and contest. Looks like the Titans have just spawned. Milia feels like he's caught in a position. Trask is trying to get a good surround here. If you win a fight like this, this can secure the first Titan for you pretty comfortably. Trying to get a good surround. But Milia's teammates come in to help. And uh, Trask's teammates just kind of leave him out to dry. 
Uh, it was a bit tough to follow up there for them, um, but it still ended up being, I think, a decent trade. Um, we can see at the resources, uh, it looks like both teams have roughly the same amount of supply out on the field. The red team has a, a few high tier units mixed in, but this is still pretty even. Yeah, definitely a pretty decent lead in shot income uh, on the red team there. Yep, so here, um, everyone's got a pretty good bank still, which is, is good for them, so they can force a few trades, they can lose some units without really being out. Um, it is possible to bottom out, at which point you can't really remax until you gather some energy from camps or you use your core to generate some energy. Um, looks like Red Team is getting a little aggressive here, getting some of uh, some fire from Requiem's Wisps. He's built up a huge Wisp count from earlier, but now he's actually losing some of them, backing off. Yeah, the, oh. the Howling Commando is doing a lot of work on the Wisps there. They can yeah. easily take out quite a few each shot. Yep, and without uh, Atreus' Scuttle Guards, there's not as much of a front line to protect them right now. If you can protect the Wisps, they can deal a lot of damage. Looks like some Scuttle Guards are coming in. We've got a couple of Patch Bots too, um, that will heal up the units, try to allow them to stay in this region a little longer. Really, it takes some damage, but heals himself with his basic ability. And it's a nice use of Safeguard from Graf, so Graf can Safeguard an allied unit, protects it, heals it up, but it can't move or do any damage for a bit. Slammer does manage to get picked off. Uh, that's pretty big at this point in time. Your hero, really early game, is, is quite strong. You want to protect it. Um, so blue team does have a decent advantage right now. You can see they've got a lot more alive at the moment. They are low on their energy bank right now. Um, so this is sort of it for them until they can gather more energy or uh, generate some in their main base. But they're looking to still just close this out. Um, if they can get this first Titan, uh, Titan, they can try to push, get a couple towers, uh, which will reduce the opponent's hold on this mid-region. They won't have this safety net to fall back on, and it'll give the blue team a little bit of a resource advantage going into the mid-game. Yeah, so if you see those um, yellow halos on the units, uh, basically when you uh, free a titan and you push with it, your own units will get a, uh, an armor buff, which will um, let you sustain quite a bit more damage there. Yep, so this titan is doing work. The red team is doing a pretty good job of, of poking the blue team off of the towers. Um, but the red team is taking some of the damage here. Um, there's some return fire. Let's see the Scuttle Guards are going to get in and provide an additional front line. It's going to help a lot with zoning off. Um, if they can get two towers here, that's pretty standard. A third would be really good for them. Yeah, you basically want to clear out like the earth, the outside path where there's like outer towers there as early as possible. Because this lets you just cover a lot more ground afterwards. You yep. can have more avenues to push in than potential juggernauts or uh, engineers to push even more. And it reduces um, the enemy's vision quite a lot. Amalaya is getting really low, but a nice heal. Manages to get out. Now he's at his healing generator. He's going to heal up really easily. Early game, this is a lot of healing. Uh, Trisk, even though the Titan is down, he is making use of this advantage to try and get this tower. Um, really quickly, There's so this is a tough spot right now. Um, a couple things just happened. The Titan just died here, and Trask is pushing this tower with his Scuttle Guards to tank. He can heal them back up, um, and they're pretty tanky to begin with. But at seven minutes, these medium camps also just spawned. Um, and so now, Sushi Dad is, is coming over to flank Trask, but Vilya has to make a decision if he wants to go help Sushi Dad um, and trying to get him out of this because Excal is coming in for a flank. They can easily take care of this and take the tower. But Requiem's already in a good position to take this medium camp, which is typically easier for the red team to take. Um, it's generally thought of as theirs. It's a little contested, but it's more favorable for them. It's a little easier because you can ward both brushes and have like the safety of your tower there. Yep. It, it's much easier for red team to get that one. But Slimer doesn't have much of an army right now, so Milia in a tough spot and has to sort of make a decision. He does just come down to the medium camp. They're going to bully off here. Meanwhile, at top, Sushi Dad is doing his best to try and protect this tower, but he's surrounded and 
He does force a decent trade. The tower is putting out a fair amount of damage, but the tower does go down. Blue team gets the resources, and they're going to reduce his Howling Commando count a little bit. Meanwhile, down here, um, Flamer Millier did push Requiem off, um, but Requiem didn't lose anything. He was quick to respawn. That's good. Um, so that, that trade ended up pretty good for blue team. If Requiem had gotten caught there, that would have been a little dicier, but because blue team still has a lot of their units, um, they're just going to farm these critters for a little bit, um, and then they're going to group around this medium camp, since they know red has taken theirs. Yeah, early game, especially if you're a little low on energy, getting those medium camps is like really important, um, especially for the next fight that's going to happen at the Titan. This lets you like afford losing a few uh, units and being able to max back out. Yep. So while blue team is clearing this medium camp, um, Exhale has thrown down an ion cannon using his engineer. The ion cannon doesn't have any towers to kill anywhere, but it's going to put some poke damage onto this warp prism, um, or uh, warp spire, sorry. Uh, it won't kill it outright, but it could damage its health a little bit. So the opponent can see this big ring, they see this on their mini map. Uh, they can choose to respawn if they want to protect their spire a little bit. Looks like they're opting right now, they just cleared um, one of their safe blue camps. And now, this is where the builds start to materialize. So Amelia, who's had, he's just been on like four or five scuttle guards most of the game. He's now got um, dredge crawlers, which are these really slow units that deal a lot of AoE damage at long range in uh, these Vespid Carriers that can pick them up, drop them, they can fire and then pick them back up. So this is his army, it's all in here. Here's one of the dredge crawlers right now. Um, you'll see they get picked up in a second. But meanwhile, Trisk, on the other hand, um, he's still on this Scuttle Guard army. Um, he's remaxing, he's gonna have more Scuttle Guards, so his build is, is much tankier and he's looking to build uh, high tier units called Aquadillas. They're incredibly powerful frontline units to do a lot of single target damage. Um, looks like Slammer um, picked off the tower and now he's trying to get out. Um, looks like since he still has his tower here he's gonna be safe. Um, meanwhile Sushi Dad is kind of coming in for a flank potentially. Yeah, if Sushi Dad could flank those wisps with his commandos that would be a lot of damage on Rick Wayne. Yeah, um, right now, since Milia is top farming hilariously this critter region with these dredge crawlers, um, Blue Team does have good control of this. Slammer throws down his ultimate, Cleansing Light, to try and bully us off. They pick off the Ion Cannon that was, was doing some damage to this tower. Um, so they are doing a good job of zoning, but Milia really needs to do something as his team tries to hold on. Um, these blizzards that are going down from the frost cars are doing a lot of extra damage and slowing these howling commanders pre preventing them from retreating um so overall that went pretty well for blue they've got um a decent army lead in terms of the actual supply but there's a lot of shards wrapped up in this war dredge crawler army um a lot of power so blue needs to use their just raw army force advantage right now to try and bully and, and DPS down the Titans really quickly. As you can see, they've already got a little bit of a lead here, but Milia needs to use his dredge crawlers to poke and deal as much damage as he can. Yeah, these do a lot of AoE damage, especially to like uh, tier 1 units, very fragile tier 1 units. One or two of these can literally wipe half of an arm of a little tier 1 armies. The Wisps just have to be very careful there. Yep, so the Wisps are poked for, they're trying to get good surface area on this Titan, but they're really scared of those dredge collar shots. Um, Red does not have much of an army, they should be reinforcing soon, so this is really Blue's chance to get a lot of DPS in. Um, Requiem splits off one Wisp to take the shot, it's a pretty good trade for him. These Scuttle Guards take a bunch of huge hits, they're much tankier, but four hits kills quite a few of them. Requiem barely dodges that last shot, he's going in for the Titan, oh my god, uh, loses a bunch of Wisps. That's pretty big. These dredge crawlers are really starting to pay off now. They have chewed through Treyask's entire scuttle guard line. Requiem's low on Wisp. Exhale's trying to hold with some blizzards, cutting off the commandos. They're trying to trade, but a lot of damage is going on to the Wisps. Treyask actually pops his ultimate, which keeps all these units alive temporarily. Keeps them at uh, a bottom cap of health, so they can't die. 
sadly, sadly dies in the process. Yep, sacrifices himself, and blue is looking pretty thin. The dredge core has really, really thinned out the numbers. And even though they don't have a lot of DPS on their side, they're able to take control of the Titan region. And now they have a Titan pushing for them. Yeah, even if it's a fairly small army in numbers, like the dredge crawlers are definitely a very big threat there, especially because Requiem is playing three mass tier ones right now. Um, doesn't have yet high tier units. Yeah, um, so Blue hasn't lost these towers yet, they're just trying to hold on. This Titan is much stronger than the first one. Some Blizzard's going down to try and isolate these frontline units. The dredge car is trying to sweep around to the side. Um, they're going to deal with this ion cannon that Excal put down to, to poke at this tower. Um, Titan doing a lot of work. It can easily clear these three towers, and they're going to try to make a push on the Warp Spire as well. It looks like Red's going to try to pull back a little bit. They're pretty low on units, um, aside from the Dredge Callers. Milea pops his ultimate um, to try and force a good trade here, just to buy time for the Dredge Callers to come in and clean up. Um, these circles you see are, are spells from this Quadrupus. They reduce all of the damage uh, by 40% in that zone. So they're pretty decent at helping uh, Trask's units tank the Dredge Crawler shots. Um, significantly increases the number of hits it takes to kill one. Yeah, they also have another spell that puts a uh, plate on a unit, uh, which is also very good at dealing with Dredge Crawlers. Yep, that white bar you saw um, is temporary plate that the Quadrupus put on that unit. Um, plate. Each unit of plate um, tanks an entire hit, so a dredge crawler shot, a wisp shot, doesn't matter. It's very good at dealing with the dredge crawlers. Like, uh, Excal is throwing down another iron cannon to try and deal with this. As they take the hard camp, um, looks like red team is taking both their safe hard camp and the top left hard camp at the same time. That's a very uh, greedy but efficient move. Blue team's opting just to group, just to be safe, because taking this camp does put you in a bit of a tight spot. Um, if the other team can uh, swing around here and trap you in this corner, it can be really devastating. Um, now blue team needs to uh, do something with this now that they're grouped, because they haven't taken their own safe hard camp. Blue team does manage to take out uh, the tower with some uh, skeletal guards running up and with the iron cannon doing its job. These carriers are really the, the focus point right now. Uh, the four dredge crawlers in them, um, they're getting magic upgrades right now, so Milia has been dumping all of his shards since he's maxed out on dredge crawlers, you can't build more than four. He's putting all of his shards into ability power upgrades, uh, which makes the dredge crawler explosions much, much more powerful. Doesn't matter against the smaller tanky, or the smaller uh, squishy wisps, but against Risk front line, he can just chew through it. Yeah, it will let, definitely let him do a lot more damage to the solo guards. Uh, unless they're, they have played, obviously, but if you've seen the few shot earlier, unupgraded, the Dredge Quarter shots can't actually take down that easily, the scuttle guards. Yep, XL uses Engineer to try and poke here, um, but they respond pretty quickly. They've built an Engineer of their own now on the red team, which can heal structures as well. So it was healing the shots that the Iron Cannon was doing. Um, a very good response. Blue team now taking this time to regroup and take their safe hard camp. Um, that means it'll respawn a little later than the red team's hard camp, which could give them a timing window in the later game potentially. Um, but they were able to trade a tower for it. Pretty decent. Um, this engineer on this side, healing up the, the earlier damage to the warp spire. Pretty nice. Uh, Requiem continuing to farming up. He's now switching to Dead Eyes. Uh, these are sniper units that we saw in the earlier game. Uh, if he can get a pick onto one of those carriers, that would be pretty huge. It would basically wipe Milia's army completely. Um, they have a few other options too. Uh, Excal's Rhyme, the, the basic ability, is a Frost Bolt. It freezes the first unit it hits, so they can lock down the carriers or a couple of the Dredge Callers. That would open up a huge timing window. Um, for the blue team as Milia has to rebuild those and it take a while. Yeah, both, both sides really have to be careful there because on one side you have Milia with the Dredge Crawler that can take out a lot of units, but on the other side you have quite a few units that are really good at picking out single targets. 
And if those Dredge Core dies, then like, it's most of their army that's going to A nice heal from Milia to save that Dredge Core. He picks them all up, but his his ally is taking a ton of damage here. Some Blizzards, some Cleansing Light goes down to zone, Requiem out for a little bit, but it might not be enough. Slammer's army is mostly gone at this point. Sushi Dad's mostly gone. Again, almost all that they have is in these carriers right now. He's dropping these Dredge Crawlers, getting off some nice shots. He just has to do some chip damage here because the Titans have just spawned. And if Blue has much of an army lead going into this, they can DPS it down before they can respond. Slammer's trying to get out, barely goes down. Milia's going to get out, barely. He's got a heal, so he's a little tankier. He can be fine. Um, Snipe's going down on Atreus. Blue lost most of their stuff too there. They they extended pretty far, and the Dredge Cores were able to do a fair amount of poke damage. Excal gets out with his two Frost Collars. Those are the units that have been putting down the Blizzards. Uh, lines that do damage over time and slow units in them. Uh, he's also got his first Ice Frog. So this is a tankier unit. It's going to be able to soak up more hits from the Dredge Crawler. Um, and it has Icy Breath, which is a, a cone channeled freeze. Um, so if he can, again, catch the Dredge Crawlers. That's the name of the game right now for Blue. Yeah, those those heavy crowd control spells are actually very important there. Um, that can let you lock down either the carriers or go out the rest of the enemies so that you can actually... Yep, Red has almost no DPS on this right now. They're just respawning their armies from that earlier fight. But he still has his healthy 4 Dredge Crawler count, able to completely zone Requiem off. Requiem wants to get some snipes down onto this carry, but the Titan is actually zoning while Milia is using it to block the snipes. Um, so, excellent positioning, Milia. Requiem just trying to delay a little bit. Trisk looks like he's um, a little low on shards right now. He's trying to flood out a couple extra high tier units, so he's clearing a medium camp. This is giving Red pretty decent control. They don't have a lot of DPS here because Slammer's sort of in a similar position. He's farming up to get some extra shards. Um, so right now, not a lot of action in the middle. They just got they've got control of this, but they can't actually do that much damage with what they have here. Um, looks like they did send a Juggernaut to distract a little bit, but. Um, they're not dispensed with pretty easily. And Red does have a bit of a lead going into this Titan fight. Uh, the armies are a little bit tipped into Blue's favor, but these Dredge Crawlers are super scary. They can swing that pretty quickly. Excal's trying to come in from the left and get a flank on these carriers, and they go over to the right. They're going to tank a couple hits. The Dredge, uh, the dredge Crawlers are going to soak a couple hits into the Scuttle Guards. Um, still doing work. Gets a couple snipes. One of the dredge cars really low, picks it up, carriers at half health, some nice icy breaths go down onto Slammer's entire army, some blizzards follow up, Slammer is completely wiped, Sushi Dad is again pretty low, uh, and these carriers and these dredge callers are hanging on for red team. Yeah, those those two icy breaths on the wisp were definitely what made that fight there. Like one of the ice frogs is getting pretty low, red is so close to killing the titan and they're zoned off, they really desperately want to get a little bit more damage here, but they don't have much to do it with. These snipes from slammer are coming down and, and chipping away at these ice frogs, they have a high health pool, but not much to heal them with right now. Really coming back in, trying to get some work with the dredge crawlers, Trace tanking with his hero and plated shell really well. Um, like doing a lot of work, but it oh. does connect with the wisps. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty big. And Ice Breath coming down on the rest of Slammer's army, chaining into another one. He's got a bunch of Slammer's high tier spellcasters. The dredge crawlers putting a couple hits onto the icy frogs. They're really low. Cleansing Light comes in to zone out, but one of the ice frogs goes down. This other ice frog really low, still has a healthy dredge crawler count. And the ice frog gets sniped off at the last second. Uh, they're trying to push forward. It looks like. I think they've they've got more on the field right now, um, and they might actually be able to just barely finish this Titan with what they've got. Yeah, energy-wise, they're pretty much on the same ground, but there's still that army of Dredge Crawlers doing like a lot of pressure. Just can't do a bad move there if you commit your low-tier army and those Dredge Crawler connects. It's it's a lot of damage. Yeah, um, so they do get the Titan. It's back at pretty decent health now. Um, and they have destroyed these towers, so now they're looking to go straight to the Warp Spire, um, one of the warping points. They're opting not to push with it, they're opting to get control of these medium camps, farm up, um, but this might still be able to take out this Warp Spire. Um, Trask is using 
Vindication here to mitigate the damage, and Escal is using his Engineer to heal it. If they can completely prevent damage here, that would basically negate the Titan fight. It would be a bit of a blunder from the red team. It's going to be really close. Alright, so they barely heal it um, enough in time to keep their right warp fire up. The Engineer is healing it. Um, but they did get good control of the medium camps. Milia is going to clean these up really easily with the dredge crawlers. He's feeling a little scared now because the titan's dead and he doesn't have vision of what's going on. Um, so he's a little scared, but these carriers are nicely positioned. Um, Snipe's coming in to try and poke down, but Milia is able to pick up and get away. Uh, down here we've got a juggernaut about to push in. Wants to finish that off, but... It's healed up a lot of its shield, and the engineer did a little bit of health work. It's now putting down an iron cannon to try and poke at this again, but there's already an engineer in place to defend. And it looks like everyone's pretty much maxing out. Um, pretty large armies right now, pretty decent banks. Um, the red team's looking to try and poke and prod with these dredge crawlers, try to thin out the numbers a little bit before. The next Titan fight. Blue team is just trying to lock down those carriers, get some nice snipes onto it. Ilya comes around with his dread crawlers to take care of this ion cannon. Um, quick work. And now it looks like uh, Slammer is actually going to create a little split push here. He's using his hero to tank the tower. It's got a lot of health. Um, his other units are very squishy. He shields himself with his precognitor. That prevents all incoming damage for a set amount of time really really good protective spell um he can use it on milia's carriers to protect them milia is getting caught out a little bit just as hero though his carriers are able to get out meanwhile down here sushi dad is making a push of his own he's killing some critters at the moment i uh, have to keep the caterpillars in check but it looks like he's gonna swing up to the warp fire engineer here undefended um it's getting healed but no multitask it's dead who controlled that wow garbage um so some carries are getting low some blizzards from excal hurting it he gets a frostbolt onto it but milia pops his ult to keep this carrier alive but it might not be able to get out anyways he heals it it goes down and i think that yep yeah, that, that was, was the carrier that was the one <laughs> he is completely busted right now but it looks like slammer is retaliating and sushi dad is retaliating sushi dad took out the warp spire slammer is about to take one out of his own Blue has to make take advantage of this timing window. They're pushing, trying to get a warp spire down, see if they can get more. They have a pretty decent army advantage uh, from the looks of it, both in scrap and in energy, or shards and energy. Red team has to respond now. They did get two warp spires off of the blue, has a large army. They've taken a warp spire out of their own. They're grouping up. Slammer's coming in for a flank, takes out a couple spellcasters, takes out a healer. Excel doesn't have much of a front line to protect because he's not expecting this flank, but he turns on Slammer. And it looks like Slammer's getting classed on. Freezes most of his army. All these wisps are going to fall. That's a pretty good trade for Blue again. Cleansing Light comes down, but it might be too late. Trace pops his ult to save the few spellcasters that are in the range. Another Cleansing Light from Blue. He's going to zone out Sushi Dad. Red is down in supply. They have almost nothing left. Um, this is going to be a pretty devastating push. Blue is just looking to get as much damage off of this as they can. Uh, they could end with this because they've got 180 to 40 supply lead. Ilya has no dredge cars right now. He's just stalling. He's got one dredge car on the way that he needs to use to try to make the hero defense. Um, Traesk is using Vindication and his Aquadilla is these giant tanky monsters that have a cannonball to leap into the fight right there. Um, just to tank all the structure damage. They're making a play onto their inner healing generator. Dredge crawlers are out. He's only got one carrier, so he has to be really, really careful with this one carrier. Titans have just spawned now. Um, this might cause Blue to back off. They really want to get this healing generator, but with the dredge crawlers up, that might just be enough to let Red stabilize. I definitely don't want to overcommit now that the Titans are out. If they misstep and lose most of their army then it's going to be really hard for them to get the titans so it's much but much safer play there to just conserve their army and keep them out for the titan fight yep the dredge cars with the ap upgrade doing a lot of damage 
Excal needs to use Vindication and Plated Shell to try to keep his units alive because the AP doesn't matter against the Plated Shell. Milia gets a ton of chip damage onto Excal's army, but Red doesn't have much else to follow up with. They're clearing this hard camp to try and get enough resources to rebuild. Milia gets caught with his hero. One of the dredge cars go down, which is pretty huge. That's a giant chunk of Milia's army. Who has complete control of this Titan region right now. There are hard camps up on the side, which might come into play later, but right now, it looks like Red Team wants to regroup and take control of this. Red Charles coming in, could be some huge hits on the Wiss, he sacrifices a few to take one. Everything else looks like it gets out alive. Trask has a front line here, trying to soak some damage, protect Raccoon as he gets some snipes in. Aquadillo jumps out with a sliver of health. Ice Frog's on the right, trying to catch Slammer's army, a Blizzard goes down to slow them, and a follow up with the Icy Breath. Another one. He's doing a lot of chip damage here. Not too much follow up though. Yeah. Yep. Slimer still gets out with a lot of his spellcasters, so more could have happened there. These ice frogs are getting really low. Plated shell onto one of them saves it, but the other ice frog goes down. Icy Breath on cooldown. He's just trying to get out now with his ice frog. Puts the zoning blizzard out, but Sushi Dad with a nice flank. Excal basically wiped. They've got three dredge crawlers still. The army is swapped into Red's favor right now. The Dredge Crawler is doing a lot. A nice snipe from Requiem to pick off one of the Dredge Crawlers. Frostbolt locks the carry in place and a snipe almost takes it out, but not quite enough damage. He had AP that would have one-shot it, but doesn't quite have enough ability upgrades yet. Blue is... Um, Excal is looking particularly low. Trask has a nice army of Aquadillas right now, but he's helping Excal farm back up to get an army. Requiem still looking decently healthy. Lost a few wisps, but he's looking to snipe down, trade with Slammer's dead eyes as well. Um, Slammer does a nice counter snipe to pick off some of, some more of Requiem's wisps, and it looks like we've got the Aquadillas coming in now for Treus to try and protect Requiem. Yeah, the Aquadillas are going to be really good to just dive into the enemy armies, do some crowd control because they do slow when they land. I'm yeah. Like, help them pick up some units there. Exactly. If he can jump into the dredge cars as they're out of the carriers and slow them down, lock them down for just a second, that could scare Milia enough to pop his ultimate, which would be huge for them, because then with the ultimate down, that means that he has no way to get out of a tough bind for a substantial amount of time. Red does have pretty good control of this region. They're DPSing down. They've got a lot of wisps to put out a lot of damage quickly. They should add sticking on a mostly Howling Commando based composition to deal with Requiem's Wisps. And these Dread are still doing a lot of work. They easily take that Titan. And we'll see what they do with it. We've got a Juggernaut, well timed, coming in a little early for Red Team. Um, but it is protecting their Titan for a brief bit. Looks like Red Team is opting to just go straight for the Nexus. They think this Titan is strong enough to end the game right here. Titans do get pretty powerful. It's putting on a lot of damage here, but Excal catches a lot of the dredge crawlers and some blizzards. Milia pops his ult to keep them alive, and they just need a little bit more damage. The carrier is down. The blizzard does a lot of damage. Some snipes coming from Requiem. Really nice. Treyas landing some great cannonballs in onto Slammer's army, just pushing people off. The Titan is doing some work on the Nexus. The shield, or the archive, and the shield is down. It's doing health damage now. It can't be recovered. One of the Aquadillos zone, which buys the blue team some time to try and deal with this. Trask pops his ult to deal with the red cleansing light. They're just trying to barely hold on. If they can kill this Titan in time, they should be able to buy themselves a second chance. Blue Juggernaut there trying to do something, but yeah, it's not going to do anything at this point. Yeah, the Juggernauts, uh, they're very strong early game. There's a late game upgrade that you can get that makes them really very powerful, but, but it's hard to get to, yeah. yeah. And it looks like Red Team's going to back off. They did take a lot of losses there. Losing the Dredge Crawlers was really, really bad. Yeah. Um, huge. So they need to regroup. They're taking some camps, trying to regroup. Um, we'll see how Blue Team uses their advantage right now. Requiem trying to poke around, trying to find some units that can pick off over this wall with some dead eyes. Um... Looks like Trask and Excal coming up to the top hard camp. Um, they want to get a nice bank of resources, get some more uh, shards to spend on upgrades. 
the red team just regrouping right now. Um, blue team probably would have rather pushed, but with um, the fear of Dreadcrawlers coming out enough, they're popping out just about now. A little afraid to overextend. Um, so red is regrouping. They're going to have a maxed army out soon enough. Blue team getting a lot of resources to spend on upgrades and have a little bit of a bank if they need to remax. This wisp down here checking for the bottom hard camp. He's doing like very, very uh, gradual work on some of these critters. Um, a sentinel comes out from Milia just to keep tabs on the blue's army. He's looking to find good angles um, to use his carriers with. Um, Sushi Dad. He's going on up here, pokes up and realizes he's a little outmatched. Down at the bottom, um, Flammer looks like he is setting up with Milia's dredge crawlers. Um, they might try to take this bottom hard camp. Milia just making quick work of all of these critters, get a lot of nice shards. Yeah, basically they're waiting on the last wave of Titan, I think. Um, this will basically, whoever wins that wave will have a a very good advantage at pushing the, the archive there. Yeah, I'm um, in red, still a little down in army. Uh, they're a little ahead in, in upgrade spending, but they should be able to match this up after um, clearing that hard camp. Be no big deal for them. Um, blue is looking to trap them here. Red has cleared the camp, but they are still a little bit trapped in the corner. Slimer is extending forward a little bit. The snipe's pushing back. He's trying to do some work onto the side of Tracing Excal. But now, he doesn't have a front line, he's trying to get out, and it looks like they're pushing forward. Excal uses his ult to trap his entire army, slowing everything. They're making good trades here. Meanwhile, on the left side, these Aquadillos are zoning out the dredge crawlers, and Icy Breath freezes everything here, and Aquadillo jump over the wall to engage for Requiem's army to protect it. And a lot of losses on the red side. The dredge crawler is still in the back doing work. He needs to answer this before Blue can push to win or get the next Titan. Played with jail. some plate, yeah. Yep. Both Trask and Exhale have a huge quadrupus count right now. A bunch of quadrupuses, quadrupi, quadrupox on the field. A nice snipe from Slammer ticks off one of the ice frogs. The plated shell not quite fast enough. Plated shell tanking for this Aquadillo. Trask heals it up too. He's tanking still returning. Yeah, he's tanking a lot, but these dredge cars might get frozen. Two of them get frozen. One goes down. Can you pick the other one up? No, it goes down. Down to two dredge crawlers. They're making a pretty decent push off this advantage right now. So Agudil getting really low, getting killed, but it might go down. Trask uses his ultimate to save it and to block the cleansing light. Snipes coming down. They're able to do a lot of poke damage back here from these defenses. We're gonna take out this small little tower. The Juggernaut's just gonna march by unhindered. I'm recommending him tanking with the only thing he has to tank with is hero. And the dredge crawlers look like with the the dead eyes, they're gonna be enough just to push blue back. Um, blue does have a decent, decently higher tech army. Red has remaxed. They're missing two of those dredge crawlers right now, so blue has a decent advantage going into this titan fight. Yeah, Hydra is definitely doing like a lot of work to deal with the dredge crawlers, putting plates all the time. Uh, putting the quarter of his AOEs, that helps a lot tanking those those dredge crawler shots. Otherwise it could, we would go a lot worse for that team for sure. It looks like both teams are just kind of mostly farming back up, doing a little bit of damage here, but everyone wants to remax before this last fight because it could be pretty, pretty tough. It could easily end the game in either direction at this point. It's like the army counts are getting pretty close, pretty similar well within the range of just one good dredge crawler blast for red. They're mostly poking right now, they don't want to lose their army while the titans are up. Yep, Excel trying to creep forward with this ice frog using plated shell, try to get in position to catch something, but Slimer's being very cautious, um, burning a bunch of cooldowns right now on all of the quadrupi, but there is a high, pretty high count. Some snipes do some chip damage on Trace's army, but I think it was, and he gets a cannonball, which is huge. The icy frog, ice frog, cannot quite fall off. The, the aquadilla is doing a lot of damage, though. Um, a nice plated shell. Dredge crawler is trying to answer onto Requiem's army. He splits off a wisp, takes some damage. 
Quadrupus takes a hit, that's not what you want. Um, plated Shell onto the Ice Frog though. Slammer trying to poke from the right with his dead eyes. This is a poke comp that's really trying to whittle down the blue team's army. Ice Frog gets low, but has Plated Shell to help it out a little bit. Harry is crawling for He's got his four Dredge Crawler counting back up. They look like they've taken control of the region. Yeah, Requiem wants to be very careful about that drop crawler there. If the shots connect, that's like his entire army going out. That's it, yeah. And likewise, Milia needs to be very careful. He's got almost his entire team army right here. If this goes down, there's not much to scare the blue team away from just engaging hard onto what's left. Oh, a nice shield, nice precog shield onto the carrier to protect it from damage. Milia is tanking with his hero. Milia pops his ult because he's afraid of this icy breath, but he does pick up in time. He's still tanking, protecting Slammer's army as well from these Aquadillos. They are getting collapsed on right now, trying to get closer and closer with these Ice Frogs using Plated Shell to tank for them. Yeah, Ice Frogs tanking a lot of fresh polar damage right now. Yeah, and it looks like one of the Aquadillos is really hurt. Trace pulling back a little bit. And Plated Shell still helping a lot, but they are starting to take some chip damage. Red Crawler is really healthy right now. Snipes don't do much with the plate up. One of the Ice Frogs really low. Yeah, the Aquadillos and the Ice Frogs basically being their main front line. They're doing a lot of tanking for them. Yeah. It looks like Red does have an advantage. Slammer laying down some Snipes, but gets caught in a huge cannonball and a huge Icy Breath follow-up. The Dredge Crawlers need to poke back down, but Plated Shell taking a lot of that damage. Some Quadrupus hits going down. Cleansing Light to zone out to try and protect Quadrupi and the Aquadillos. Yeah, that was most of Red's army going down there. Dredge Crawler is still there, but it's trying not enough damage Catches there. one of the, the Dredge Crawlers ult too late as the rest of the Dredge Crawlers pick back up. Blue has taken back control, even though their Titan is really low. They have enough time right now to try and DPS it down before Red can regroup. Requiem putting some nice snipes down here. There's still a few dredge crawlers left in this carry. He's got to do some work with them. Got to poke Blue off of this Titan before it's too late. Blue's just trying to zone desperately. Yeah, Blue's Titan's really low. You don't want to lose your army at this point. Yeah, and you really don't want to lose this Titan fight, which is why Sushidad is diving in here, trying to pick off some spellcasters to give Milia some breathing room. He does pick off a couple frost collars, which will reduce the number of blizzards that are coming out, but this Titan is getting really low. Milia needs to do some work here, but Requiem and the Ice Frog tanking pretty well. And if they can finish this, and this is a pretty deadly push. See if Red has enough time to regroup, build their army back up. They've got, they're buying some time for their production slots to finish. As the Titan pushes forward, Milia trying to get some last ditch chip damage in. Slammer throwing down some dead eye snipes. Ice Rock taking a lot of hits, but no plated shell to protect it. Christ healing it a little bit. Yeah, the Titan's gonna put a lot of pressure here. They're basically have to take it down before it takes out both the last um, healing battery and the archive right there. Yep, it's easily gonna make this healing gener go down, which is pretty big, but the archive is really what blue team needs here. A nice freeze on the Sushi Dad's army. That's gonna melt most of the frontline. Milia did pick up a few scuttle guards to tank a little bit better. He's got another dredge car, so he's back at his max account right now, but this Titan is doing work. It's about to go down. Hasn't even popped the shields yet. Blue really needs to take advantage of this. They've got a bigger army right now. Dredge Crawler's still up. They have Titan dies, yeah. They have to either commit fully or back off. They're gonna take damage from this Dredge Crawler army. Looks like they're committing. Trace pops his ult. There's a bunch of vindications going down to reduce the damage. Really trying to That's do the last two stand, damage, but yeah. the cannonball is zone out and uh, the dev team barely takes it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Glad I got to pick the game. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. Um, well, so that's sort of what uh, it looks like when we play with our playtesters. Um, yeah. uh, a sort of a different look from the game that Tivo played earlier. In that game, we had a lot more poke, a lot more of a front line. A lot more front line. Um, yeah. It's a, a very different feel. They definitely feel. had the two hydros. Um, 
just doing a lot of tanking for them. The, the ice frogs definitely helped them too. Um, yeah, most of the interactions on red team was around the dredge crawlers. Like there was a lot of back and forth between uh, Requiem and its and his wisp army yeah. and the dredge crawlers. It was like you definitely don't want those dredge crawlers to impact there. No, uh, it would wipe their army in like literally one one or two one hits. Yeah, shot. it's yeah, it's uh, definitely a fine line that you have to walk trying to get damage out with the wisps without taking any hits. Yeah, and it's it's also like very scary for Emilio because. He has to keep this Dredge Crawler alive, and the main way of doing it for him right now is using those carriers. Yeah. And when you have your entire Shard army in a single carrier, it can be like really scary to lose yeah. that. And, and we saw that earlier. Like, we saw that earlier. When that yeah. carrier goes down, it's like your whole army going down. Yeah. That was really tough for Red. They did uh, end up trading pretty well off of it because it took Blue's entire attention basically yeah. just to try and catch that. They were really, really desperate. To wipe uh, the dredge crawler force. Yeah, uh, definitely dodging the dredge crawler like takes a lot of your attention span, yeah. and it's a lot of span you cannot use to macro a little more, get some camps, and plan around more. So you have to be really careful about just your single positioning of your units. It's, yep. it's a lot of time saving. And be really quick with your defensive abilities yeah. to try and. Yeah, the play is going down like it. really quickly in that in that game for sure. Yeah, sometimes. 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 Most sometimes. of the times. <laughs> Miss so some frost yeah. is uh, going down sometimes. <laughs> it was probably a bug or something, I don't know. <laughs> right, <laughs> has uh, to be. Who made this game? <laughs> cool, so... Cool, um, so basically the program for today is that um, a bunch of us developers are gonna rotate here in the chair and just play a bunch of games, maybe uh, cast a few more replays. Um, we're gonna take a short break now so that we can uh, set up the following uh, casting and I don't know yet, but uh, one of the other developers will come and yeah. uh, play some games. He's probably tired of us. He'll get right. someone more entertaining. Yep. Cool. So we'll see you in a little bit. Yep. You all tap. All right.